Hi guys, welcome back to Sure Parenting. Today, I wanted to talk about Marshall Rosenberg and nonviolent communication. Uh, we as a family have really been focusing on his work lately. And when I first found a YouTube video of him at a, a lecture teaching this concept, I really enjoyed it. It really resonated with me. And I sent it to my husband and said, hey, you know, you might be interested in this. And that's kind of all I said. And he told me that I did not do a very good job selling it, but that it was really impactful for him too. So I will link that video below in the description so that you can watch it yourself. I am by no means an expert, but we have been practicing these strategies and this information as a family, and it's really been working well. So today I wanted to share one particular thing that just blew me away um, in the way that he said it. So in my book, Sure Parenting, Building Blocks to Create Their Best Childhood, I have a chapter on perspective, and I talk about how important it is to choose your words with intention because your your words and how you view things is going to influence how you parent what he said was essentially that but much better um and the way he said it just stuck with my brain and it's really helped me so i kind of want to walk you through what i've been doing recently literally every day so what he said was it is not the thing that's making you mad it's your thoughts about the thing that are making you mad and the power in that is that your thoughts, you can control. And I was actually at dinner with my friend who's a therapist, and she was like, so CBT, <laughs> which is a therapy approach that helps people who are dealing with intrusive thoughts and who are struggling with anxiety or thoughts that really aren't serving them. And I was like, yeah, I guess so. It kind of is, you know? Um, but it was... So interesting to hear him say it exactly in that way, because what then happens is some catalyst, something the kids do or say that is frustrating, like maybe right now they're being incredibly loud downstairs with dad. And previously my thoughts might be, this sounds unprofessional. It's going to bother people, um, stuff like that, where it would just be frustrating for me that I can hear them and it's distracting and whatever. And being aware that that is my thought and that that's influencing my feelings, I can take a step back and go, look, I'm a mom. You all know I'm a mom. You hearing my children is not a crime. That just happens sometimes. Kids make noise. I presume that if you're watching this video, you're a parent and you know that kids make noise. And seeing as the whole point here is to respect children as people, expecting them to be silent doesn't really fit with that purpose, right? And so I can change my thoughts to I'm doing the best I can. They are doing the best they can. They're going to make some noise sometimes. In this particular video, heck, I can even use it to explain my point. How valuable is that? So just in that moment, I can change my thoughts and then feel better about a trigger or something that's bothering me. So I will face a situation and ask myself, what am I thinking about this thing? What are my thoughts? And really pinpoint what it is that I'm thinking. Now, so often with our children, our thoughts have to do with the future. We, we experience something with them and then we think, oh my gosh, they're going to become a terrible person or they're going to go to juvie or they're going to be a bully or whatever it is. And we have to take a big, huge, giant step back and go, wait a minute, those thoughts are not helping. What happened right here and now? What, how can I chunk this way back down? My four-year-old hit my six-year-old. Doesn't mean he's a bully. Doesn't mean he's going to juvie. Doesn't mean he's going to be a tyrant. It just means that my four-year-old hit my six-year-old. So what can I think about that? Well, I know that four-year-olds struggle with impulse control. I know that six-year-olds struggle with impulse control. I know that their brains are not going to be fully developed until they're 25 or 26 years old. So I can think that and remember that it's actually normal for kids to struggle with these things. Then I can think he's doing the best he can. 
So what is getting in his way of doing as well as I might like him to do, or really he would like to do? Because he doesn't like hitting his brother. That's not ideal. And then I can problem solve. Then it becomes us versus what's getting in his way versus the challenge versus the problem instead of me versus him. So by changing my thoughts, I change my emotional reaction and I'm able to then problem solve with my kid. And it's the same thing for them. My six-year-old is prone to think rather dramatic thoughts. And so he might say, can I have some applesauce? I say yes. This happened recently. He couldn't get it opened and he started like freaking out. And it wasn't just because he couldn't get it open. It's because he was thinking, I'm not going to get my applesauce. I'm hungry. I'm not going to get to eat. All of those thoughts were causing the reaction. With my four-year-old who has been in speech, he was so quick to anger when he wasn't understood. And it's not because it's hard to say something again. It's because his thoughts are, nobody understands me. I can't say what needs to be said and have my needs met because I can't make myself clear. And he starts spiraling and then he reacts. So we all do this, but it's so powerful to take that knowledge and apply it whenever you're feeling feelings you don't like. If you're feeling anxiety, what am I thinking about this? If you're feeling angry, what are my thoughts about the situation? And then challenge those thoughts. Is this thought helpful? What else could I think about this situation? Maybe you think two things simultaneously for a while until you're able to discard the thought that's not serving you. Maybe that's not where you're at yet. That's okay. Just the awareness, the focused awareness on what are my thoughts about this? Are they serving me? Or should I change them? Can I change them to serve me better, to serve my kids better? That mindset is incredibly powerful. And that mindset has been what I've been focused on and honing in on in my own life recently that I wanted to share with you so that you could apply it and use that strategy to help you when you are feeling frustrated or angry or anxious or whatever it might be about your own family and about your own kids. Thank you for watching. If you need help breaking down this skill, please feel free to set up a free call at bit.ly slash callsammy. Please subscribe down below, hit the notification bell so that you get notified every Thursday when I upload a new video. Uh, they will be full of tips and tricks to help make parenting feel better too, so you can enjoy it, so you can feel like a sure parent. And comment below and tell me what thought you have changed recently. I was thinking this, but then I realized I could think this instead. So I would love to hear about your success stories. Please comment below so that we can celebrate together. I will see you guys next week.